hello guys you welcome back to our channel today we're going to be learning how to make a simple kimono dress and if you're new to this channel don't forget to subscribe like and if you like the video give it a thumbs up let's get started make sure your fabric is on fold you need to be two one for the front and one for the back the one for the front is on top of the one for the back cotton is the same for both the front and the back except for the neckline all right the first step is to out a mark one inch at the hem and uh, draw a straight line. That's going to serve as your guide. It's, you're going to place it as a guide to help you in taking other measurements accurately. Do you understand? So when you've done that, you have to input your um, bust point. Mine is nine, so I marked nine across. You know, just mark nine and then square up your line this line is also going to serve as your armhole length you know that's where you would um, place your arm opening for your sleeve okay you know it's a kimono dress so it doesn't have a particular armhole next step will be to mark your half length mine is 15 and so i'll mark 15 on um both lines i'm i'm you know taking the measurement again and again just to make sure that my lines are straight because it has a lot if you have a straight line then you are very sure that your um your measurement will be placed accurately so now that i've marked this i'm going to take um the hip depth measurement you know it's usually seven eight or nine inches after the waist so if you are very tall you can use nine if you are petite you can use seven for me it's eight that's what i use for myself and then the next would be your hemline but because my clothes um the material that i got is exactly the you know length i want to use for the dress i will not i'll just use that trim it off and then use it as my hemline so if yours is longer then you have to rule your hemline depending on how long you want the dress Starting from the shoulder line, okay, the shoulder line is basically your normal shoulder measurement plus your sleeve length, the length you want the um, sleeve to be divided by 2. Mine is, my shoulder, normal shoulder measurement is 15. 15 divided by 2 is going to give me 7.5, so I'll just place it there. I, I'm really sorry, I didn't know my camera I didn't capture, you know, that part of the video, okay, so but... I'll pull it down very soon so you would see clearly. So I will put my seven and a half inches plus the length. I already decided that my sleeve is going to be. I didn't want it to be so long, so I, I, I used um seven. You understand? So divide your shoulder measurement by two, mark, then you mark the sleeve length you desire to use for your um, kimono jacket to, for your kimono gown. Sorry plus one in sewing allowance so you go over to the chest line and take one foot of your bust measurement so when you've marked in one foot of your bust measurement you mark one in sewing allowance and one inch is allowance you know we don't want it to be very fitted because it's a it's supposed to be a free dress so if you want it to be very very big you can add like two inches three inches so in allowance we do the same for the waistline as you can see I'm marking my one inch so in allowance and my one inch is allowance in all of them next you go over to the hip line mark your um, normal hip measurement one fourth of your hip measurement one inch so in allowance and one inch is allowance when we go down to the hemline it's a little different you know we use um the same measurement we would have used for the hip but just to give it a little bit of shape down there you would take the measurement you use for the hip line and minus one inch from it you understand like you can see what i'm doing you take exactly what you have on the hip line and, and minus one inch from it just to give it a little bit of shape you understand at that down region next we're going to be doing is to connect our lines 
as we begin to connect our lines, we begin to see that the drugs will begin to form, you understand. So where you would have to start from is the chest line. It connects the chest line to the waistline, to the hip line, down to the hem line. If you're very comfortable with freehand, you can just, you know, rule it up front with your ruler. But if you're not very comfortable, you can just use your hip curve, whatever curve you have, or whatever ruler you have. I'm just trying to use um, the hip curve for mine. And just to get that, you know, that cool slant over there. And then I'm connecting. And I'm really sorry you can't see this part of the video. I just connected the hip to the hemline, to my um, mark at the hemline. And when I'm done doing that, I'm going to um, go over to shipping out the, you know, I'm, the, I'm opening I'm really sorry you can't see this part of the video, but I'm going to be pulling it down very soon, so you see exactly what I'm doing. You understand? We've already um, marked where we want our sleeve length to be, and we're going to take whatever we've marked there. We're going to bring it all the way down. You understand? We're going to take whatever we have there and come down. And what I usually love doing is I usually like going in by half of an inch or one inch, depending on what you want. You square up the line. When you square up the line, the next thing is to go over to your chest line. Now there, in order to get a very clean curve, you don't want anything bulging out. You go down by two inches. When you've gone down by two inches, you come over to this angle over here and go down by one inch, just like I'm doing here you go down by one inch and then use freehand or your ruler your french curve or your hip curve and form a smooth curve just the way i'm doing in this video and then when you're done doing that to so come back to the shoulder line i'm really sorry you can't see this part by the time i pull it down you'll be able to see it um, I went you were going to go down by one inch for your normal shoulder slope when you're done doing that we'll go over to our neckline please pay keen attention so you observe what I'm doing here now I marked the neck width I wanted I wanted three inches because I'm not so big <laughs> so if you're, if you're um, a plus size you can use three and a half or four and then I went down by three and a half you understand because I didn't want it to be very down because I'm going to have a cut there. So when I have done that, I also took my back measurement. It's usually the same width but one inch neck depth because I want it to be high behind. You understand? So I'd not be falling back when I put it on. Then for here, I um, went down again by three inches because I wanted to have a cut in front. Okay, so I then went in by half of an inch and gave it a you know i slanted the line i connected the lines okay so whatever you want to explain yours as well, i connected the lines and then i connected um my shoulder slope to my neck width so i'm done drafting out my dress what i'm going to do is to cut it out and then Starting from the arm, um, when I folded in my um, sewing allowance, I would join the rest of the bodies. So for cutting it, I would start from the back. You know, we place the front on the back, however the case is. So we'll cut out the back neckline, first of all. Always remember to um, rule your sewing allowance for the neckline because especially when you are cutting um, a dress that have a half cut, if you don't take your proper, if you don't kind of measure out your proper sewing allowance, it will shorten the length of your dress definitely. So be very very careful with your sewing allowance. Make sure you add it when you are when you are cutting. Then you then cut out your shoulder line sorry your 
I'm whole length. And when you're done doing that, we'll go back to the neck. I have to cut that out just to give myself precision. Then when you go back to the neck, carefully cut out the front the front part. That is the front neckline. You know we've cut the back neckline already. So you cut the front neckline and then you cut the rest of the body. You understand? That was that's going to be a very quick one. Okay, now we are done cutting. As you can see, we did a very, very quick job. Okay, now you'd see what the front piece and the back piece looks like. This is the front piece, the other is the back piece. The neckline we used is going to become evident now, like you can see. Isn't this beautiful? That's the front over there. Yeah, that's the front. Look at this neckline. This is what we wanted to achieve by going down by three inches and then taking it in by half of an inch. So we would input our, you know, we'll notch the part that we want to use for the pocket. We'll square up that waistline because that's where our pocket is going to start from. So when we square that up, we'll also square the hip line so when we square up the hip line just the way i'm doing in this video you would then um, notch the lines just so that you can it can be easy for you to locate it when you want to sew in your pockets you understand i hope you are really following this video and if you like it don't forget to give it a thumbs up don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe we would really love to have you because we'll keep posting useful content useful sewing tutorials every week on this channel so we're going to be cutting out the pocket now you fold your fabric into four, just the way I did, fold it into four pieces because you need four pieces, one, two for the right, two for the left, and one for the front, one for the back, so that makes it four pieces. So I usually would use eight inches, you know, that's my, that's the difference between my waistline and my hip lines is inches so that's what i'm going to use so when i i will just place my hand and make sure that my hand feels in the pocket i really want to have that freedom so go ahead and make yours as deep as you want but make sure that the length is consistent with your hip depth so when i cut that out you're going to see what i have okay this is what i have here i have my pocket ready the next thing I'm going to be cutting is my facing. It should be just a little below your neckline. So place your, this the front facing. So I'll place my, my front panel on another material and quickly cut out the facing. Just place it carefully and cut out exactly what you have on the neckline and the extra material that you placed under it make sure you're cutting exactly the same thing you understand and when i'm i've cut that out i'll just shape it into a curve and cut it out i'll do the same thing for the back i'll just place the back panel on my extra material and then I will cut it out just the way I did to the front when I'm done doing that I will show you what I have
see guys it's very simple see see what I have I've joined it already like you see I've joined it and then it's looking very beautiful the next thing I'm going to do is to notch it I would notch it be very careful so you don't cut your thread here <laughs> that happened to me a lot of times when I was starting up I'll end up cutting my thread and then I'll start from the beginning you know you can just um, distort the shape of the dress so be careful so you don't cut your notch so when I'm done not um, notching it I'll top stitch the back the um, facing you understand I will top stitch on the facing round it's going to give you that you know sharp look when you iron it out see it's already looking beautiful without ironing it out oh my god our dress is coming along it's coming along i did the same thing for the back i'll just notch the back and then top stitch Remember, you don't touch stitch on the fabric. You touch stitch on the facing. Do you understand? It's very simple. Touch stitch on the faces, facing at all times, not on the fabric. So, for the pocket, face them front to front. This is the front. At meanwhile, I've joined these guys together. See this is the back, so I put you stitch it this way. And you see, see, so I'll just stop stitch and then you see, we have something very neat. Same thing for this side. When I do this, I'll top stitch and then I'll to be inside. You get it? So let me go finish it up and bring it for us. Like I said, I've I've joined the sides, like the sides. See, from okay, here I'll do my normal one end, went this way, and then I went all the way down, down. And I did the same thing for this one. Now I joined here, so I joined it this way, this way, this way, this way, and it's going all the way down. So what I'm just going to do is to fold him, and our cloth is ready. This is our outcome. Isn't it beautiful? Go ahead and make yours and. Show us what it looks like. Comment using the comment box below.